Good morning YouTube. Uh, the sun's going to be directly in your face. Good morning YouTube and the internet. It's a lovely Sunday afternoon. I'm feeling a little bit better than I was yesterday. I'm just trying to get keys while I talk to you. Um, so today, this afternoon, I'm going to do a crack check on the block before I send the new ones down and the crank using the die penetrant method. And I'll show you how to do that. These are the RBs or a lightweight block. They're lying. So the first thing we've got to do is um, clean up the block. So scraping off all the gasket material. Step one. So now you've, well, once you've scraped the gasket material off, um, I'll now I'll attack it with the uh, uh, with some solvent to try and get some more of this off, and a green scouring pad. So just wipe the solvent on with a rag. Let it soak a little bit, start eating out any of the crap that's been left behind from the razor. Makes life a little bit easier. And then start scrubbing. So after you've done that with the solvent, um, go back over it, dry. Get a reasonable finish. With most of the gasket material removed. So the reason I'm doing this outside is this stuff makes a hell of a mess. It's a three-part process. It's a cleaning agent, then it's the dye, the penetrant, and then it's the developer. So first thing I'm gonna do. Let's clean it with this. Now that we've got it relatively clean now, contaminants will show up in the test. So I've never done this on an engine block before. Um, we'll see how it goes. Let's have a minute to work on the surface. The way this works is the red particles, the dye, are, um, I think they're hydrogen based. They're an incredibly small molecule uh, that can seep into microscopic cracks and fissures in the surface um, and it'll soak in there. Uh, so we spray this on, depends on the temperature as to how long you leave it, but usually five minutes. It's more than enough. Uh, if you're on stainless steel, you got to give it more time. So you don't be shy with the stuff either, you give it a good soak and now sit back and wait 10 minutes for that to penetrate into the material. Okay, that's had 10 minutes, 
I spent the whole 10 minutes shaking this can up. This is the developing agent. Um, it dries to like a, a white, it's like a white powder suspended in a fast evaporating fluid and that uh, gives you the contrast to see the red dye. But first you go clean it off. Clean rags again, always clean rags. Wipe off the excess. Otherwise everything will be pink. Yeah, that's a cleaning agent. And you wipe this off straight away. Now, the developer. Sprays on clear. Pretty windy out here. And it dries white. You gotta be careful you don't go too thick with it. like I have there and now we just leave that to slowly turn white you see it's turning white there on the edge so that white will spread and will cover the whole surface but you can see it's happening So that needs a couple of minutes to sit to fully dry and show any cracks. Okay, so this is at a few minutes to develop. Um, you can see the deep red around the galleries. That's because I haven't gotten all of the um, all of the dye off from the surface. It's a bit contaminated around those areas. But what we're looking for is a sharp, contrasting red crack. It's very obvious when you see it, and there's nothing there. Now here, there is the tiniest little line here, which is probably contamination, but to be sure, if it's actually a crack, you can clean this off, spray it again, and it'll come back. If it's just contamination, which it looks like it is where the edge of the gasket sits, Should, uh, shouldn't come back as sharply because there's no um, penetrant left down in the material it's just sitting on the surface so give that a wipe get the developer back on there and we give that a minute So you can see, it's not actually red anymore, so that means that while well, you can visibly see the step, there's no crack there. It's literally just the, um, the edge of the gasket. So it's not a drama. So I'm saying this block's okay, and we just wipe it off. Easy as that. Now if you're going to do something like this on an engine, you should know how to do the test. Uh, I wouldn't just 
just do this straight up and then go, okay, my block's fine. If you've never done it before, I've done this a lot. The other thing is, whenever you do use a solvent on your engine, you need to oil the area that you've just um, you've just cleaned because now there's nothing stopping it from corroding. In my case, I'm just going to spray some WD on it. The reason I'm going to do that, half hour step, is this is going in the back of the car today to the machinist tomorrow, where it's going to get uh, crack checked again. Now they also use uh, eddy current testing, which um, will show up cracks below the surface. This method will only show surface failures. It will not go below a layer to find a crack underneath. It will only show up any cracks that are in the surface. It's used mostly when you're welding. Um, make sure that you're, you're penetrating and fusing all the way through when you're you know, in between your passes. So yeah, that's, uh, that's that block crack checked and now I've got to get the crank out and do the same. I figure it's probably pretty clear why I'm doing this outside on the trailer and not inside. You don't do this anywhere near anything you don't want to be read. This shit goes everywhere and it gets in everything. So again, let it sit 10 minutes. The other thing I've never done is I've never used this on a cast finish. So I expect it to not be very good. On the cast finish, uh, it's usually got to be clean, um, you know, machine finish. Uh, that even including like angle grinders or whatever, it's still a machine to uh, create that finish. So I don't know how well it's going to go on the um, on the all the unmachined surfaces, uh, but I'm going to find out shortly. Uh, the other crank had a lot of cracks around the oil holes in the journals, so we should definitely show that up uh, if, if, they're, if they're there. Uh, it's also non-directional too, you can spray this vertically above you uh, and it'll make its way in to the cracks. So yeah, I'll give this some time to soak. So like most things in life, care and preparation gives you the best results. I'm not expecting great results on this car surface. It's very difficult to get clean, but worth a crack, pardon the pun. And this is not, this is not a substitute for crack testing by the machinist. This is supplementary to it, so this will tell me. If there's a crack in a journal, like there was last time, oh no, uh, and the crack in the block, I would have picked that up doing this test. So I would have saved myself some money and time had I done this. I didn't even think to do it. Okay, we'll let that sit for a few minutes. Alright, we've given that time to develop now. You come in and have a look. No sharp red lines. There, obviously there is around here because this is where the uh, penetrant didn't get cleaned off properly. I'm hoping... Oh, we, I just, that's a pink colour. It's not sharp. That's just contaminant where it didn't clean it off. Uh, That there, looks like it could be a crack. So, I'm going to do the same as I did before. I think it is a crack. 
clean it off. Make sure it's not just a contaminant. Reapply the developer. Leave it for a few minutes to develop on that spot. So I don't know if the camera's picking up, but I think there's definitely a crack here. It may just be in the surface. It may not be a problem. But it definitely looks like a crack. And you see over here, you see the sharpness. Maybe you can't on the camera. The sharpness is a line where these um, bungs go in. And that's sort of what you're looking for. But yeah, I think I think we may have a crack here. And a saw somewhere else. Here. This here looks like a crack. So this crank might not be any good either. I'm still gonna take it and let them test it. Um, but I'll take the other crank with me as well and hope to Christ at least one of them is okay. But it certainly looks like it's better than the other one. Uh, those cracks might not be a problem, they may just be surface issues. If they're any more than that though, that crank could be no good either. God damn it. Uh, they'll also, like I said before, they'll, they'll be doing other testing forms that the tests through the thickness of the material so there could be underlying stress fractures and things inside the material which I can't find using this method but it's a good check I know to take the other crank just in case I'm not going to bother checking it uh, I just sort of wanted to show you how to do this and give myself peace of mind I think the block's okay but ultimately the machine shop's going to tell me whether or not it is